Sports Overtime Special Edition is being brought to you in part by Shaw's, where Patriots fans are someone special every day. By Country Kitchen Bread, it starts out good and it just gets better. And by Seltzer and Ride Home, bottlers of Pepsi and other fine products for over 60 years. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Sports Overtime. I'm Bill Green, and in just a moment, we'll be taking your calls because you are the stars of Sports Overtime. I can't believe it. The Patriots are in the Super Bowl. I guess it's been, I haven't been a Patriot fan since the early 60s. I'm not going to lie about that. I casually followed them till the early 70s when I became a Pats fan, probably when the leagues merged, but it just doesn't even seem to make sense to me. Now, I'm standing by in Maine, but down in New Orleans, we have a couple of our new center regulars, Bruce Glazier and John Doherty. Oh, I love it. I love the look, Bruce Glazier. How's it going? Hey, we ran out of money. We have to get money to get back home, so these are going like hotcakes down here, Bill. John and I made them up, and we've sold at least three so far. I know, and they're going for a, a prime rate of about, what, a dollar and a quarter we're getting for them? We, well, it's a dollar we have in we the We had to give two away to get the, get right. the market We going. had one made up for Eddie McElhinney, but no one ever heard of them down here. <laughs> However, we do have one order up in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, so we'll mail that up here. I'll tell you, the city of New Orleans today, Bill Green, has opened up its hearts and its minds to Super Bowl Sunday. This is super down here. Absolutely madness, and it, it hasn't stopped. And in a few minutes, you're going to probably hear a tremendous roar because we're in the Patriots Hotel, the Intercontinental, and they're getting ready to come downstairs and head over to the Superdome, and there's a crowd out there of about, uh, well, it's going to be about 1,000 people ready to, to wish him off, so you're going to hear a tremendous roar. In let the me take a moment itself. to introduce... Go ahead. All right, let me take a moment to introduce our special guest, Ed McElhinney. He was a South Portland High star, later a UMass star, had, went on, played in the CFF, CFL, now in the USFL. Want to mention our phone numbers for the show, uh, 772 and 1-800-482-9633. Ed McElhinney, uh, how do you see this ball game? Well, it's finally nice to be here. It's been, it's been a long week, it seems, though, uh, <laughs> all the hype and everything. Uh, it's going to be a great game. I know there's uh, the TV's been playing nothing but it, and I just came from the gym, and everybody there is talking about it. They're all rushing to get back, so I think it's going to be exciting. It's almost as though this is a family event. You know, the Pats are finally in it, so everybody gets to see their boys play. So I'm really looking forward to the game. I am, too. You know, yesterday, Ed and I went over some videotape. The game is more complex than what we're about to show you, but there are a couple of simple keys that we can all look for to determine early how successful the New England offense is being. First down. In order for the Pats to beat the Bears, they must establish their run game. But they must set the run game up by using quick passes to the hot back. A hot back is running back not used in pass protection as a blocking back. Also look for a lot of play action. A play action is a quick fake to the running back, which just freezes the linebackers long enough to get the wide receivers or the running back open. When they do use a run, look for a lot of traps. John Hanna will be the big key here. The Pats will line up with their tight end to their right. Therefore, Richard Dent will line up on the Pats' left or weak side of the field, which is Hanna's strong side. I feel the Pats will work two basic running plays. If the Pats run to their right, look for straight ahead blocking with Hanna pulling from his left guard position, reading the Bears linebacker Mike Singletary, who in this particular defense is a monster. If Singletary comes up quick, Hanna will pick him up on the inside. Collins will then lead Craig to the outside. If Singletary stretches the play out, Hanna will read him to the outside, block him out. Collins will then lead Craig up to the inside. The big key here being the read off of Hanna's block. I love that football talk, don't you? Ed McElhinney, what happens if the Patriots run to the left side and they don't pull Hanna? How will that work? If they, well, what it'll be, it'll be a G block, basically where uh, the tackle will block down on the fridge in this situation. Hanna will come off his block, and then if Dent goes upfield, He'll block him out, and then the lead back will lead through with Craig going, under, you know, leading through with the back. So essentially, you're giving both Holloway and Hannah angles. Holloway blocking inside right. on the fridge, and Hannah, depending upon what Dent does, either taking him deep into the backfield or just trying to 
you know, keep him outside with the lead back coming through the hole. Exactly. Den is so quick and uh, really picks up and makes up for a lot of mistakes. So I think the big key is going to be Dent, you know, and also John Hanna, which I think everybody knows that. Boy, he, it was particularly fun watching that tape yesterday. Let's take a break. We'll be going back to New Orleans and talking with you on more of Sports Overtime in just a minute. Um, boy, that was... At Dead River, our loyal customers have been growing by the thousands every year. People like to control the price they pay and the time they buy. But giving them all great service takes work in some very long hours. So we'd like to say thanks to all our people who work so hard to keep our customers so happy. Our drivers and all the other people our customers never get a chance to meet. Thanks to all of them, you'll get your oil whenever you need it, even if you are paying less money. Montana. Hey, Marino. Great game, man. Oh, thanks. A draw play in the second quarter. Great choice. You make a choice because it feels right. Can I buy you one? It's the least you can do. Diet Pepsi, 100% NutraSweet. Uh, here you go. Don't drop it. 100% taste. See you, Dan. Joe, next year, I'm buying. Diet Pepsi, the one calorie choice of a new generation. Starts out good and it just gets better. Always wholesome, always fresh. Extra caring makes ours the best. Country kitchen bread. It starts out good and it just gets better. The finest flowers and Midwest grain. Big fresh daily goodness is our name. Country kitchen bread. It starts out good and it just gets better. The apple of my eye. You're such a peach, your top banana. You're my sweet pea, you're my plum, my tomato. And together we're such a pair. So let's begin each day with something fresh and sweet for sure. WCSH TV, Channel 6, Portland. Okay, we're back with Sports Overtime. Let's take a call. Go ahead. You are on Sports Overtime. What do you say, boy? Listen, I want to ask you a question about this, uh, about the Super Bowl. All right. Okay, there's been all kinds of media hype and all kinds of uh, attention, on the, especially on the quarterbacks, okay? They got this uh, McMahon guy from uh, the Chicago Bears, right? And he's telling... He's I want to ask Ed this, too. He's telling everybody that his butt is killing him, right? Now, I would think that if I were a linebacker, if I were a tippet or somebody, that's information I'd kill for. I mean, I know right where I want to plant my helmet now. I mean, what's he going around <laughs> telling everybody this for? Well, I don't know. Anybody want to comment on that, Eddie? You know, when we were playing, as a matter of fact, uh, when we were playing, old Jerry Hodge used to say the one part of your uniform you never want to get dirty as the seat of your pants. Ed? Well, I, I, I'd be going for that part. I hope they, they plan on dumping him down there a couple of times, but uh, I, don't, it, I guess what it is is a butt muscle. I'm really not sure. As long as it's not his groin, he'll be all set. But uh, there's a few other guys that are sick. But come game time, uh, believe me, with a game like this, they're not going to be feeling anything. Yeah, but why advertise? Why advertise your weak spot? Well, McMahon is a bit of an odd duck, and I mean, he is, you know, plus he showed everybody how sore it was when they went overhead with a helicopter. So he just, I guess he just liked to, to show that particular part of his uh, anatomy. Hey. Gee, I, I really hope that he uh, paints a little uh, target there. Because, you know. <laughs> I do too. Thanks a lot for your call. Let's take another. Go ahead. You're on Sports Overtime. Oh, they hung up on me. Let's go down to New Orleans. Bruce Glazier and um, John Doherty are standing by uh, in New Orleans. Uh, at the Patriot Team Hotel, which is the Intercontinental, and I understand that you're going to do a little talking with some Super Bowl players. Go ahead, Bruce. All right, Bill. We are down here at the Intercontinental. You know, one thing I've got to bring up is, I guess you just call it a quirk of the schedule, uh, but the Super Bowl is taking a back seat right now because everybody is here in New Orleans. This is John's birthday today, and there's a big sign outside. It says, Happy 51st. 
thousands of people on hand to celebrate. It's unbelievable. And there's a big building down the street with a, the dome over it, and I guess we're going to have a big party there. It's 51 now? Is it 51? In New Orleans, I'll admit to 51. I'm still going strong. It is a super day down here. A birthday party or Super Bowl day, whatever. This is a party town. We've talked about that before. And thousands and thousands and thousands are out in the street right now, ready to go into the bowl to, have to see a super football game. Which is where we're going very shortly. Yes, we are. You know, the Bears stand to earn about $64,000 if they won the game today. The Patriots, each player would get about $70,000, the difference in, in money because the Pats played that extra wild card game. The winner is also allocated $3,000 for a Super Bowl ring. Now, two members of the Patriots already own rigs, and they are Greg Hawthorne and Derek Ramsey. Hawthorne won his ring as a running back wide receiver with the Pittsburgh Steelers. With the Patriots, however, his playing time has been limited to special teams and a situation player. It's a role he has accepted. Uh, yeah, it makes a little difference, but, you know, as long as you win, you know, like, like I say, you know, a lot of guys here on Saturday, so we had a lot of guys that aren't playing and uh, that, that, that can be playing other places. And... Uh, but like I say, winning cares all is. When you win, you know, it doesn't matter where you come in as long as you win. And uh, right now, everybody's kind of got their mind on, on, on getting the Bears, and uh, that's what we're concentrating on. Ramsey was a tight end with the Oakland Raiders in 1981 when he won his ring. Last year, he led the Pats in receiving, but this year, because of the new offense, his receptions are down. Of course, the stats are somewhat important to you, and you like to be recognized as one of the best at your position. And uh, this year, as, as, a, as a general, you know, uh, none of our guys really had the big numbers except for Craig. So, uh, but yet we weren't in the Super Bowl either. So if it means giving up one for the other, hell, I'd rather give up and catch 30, 35 balls each year. We're going to be back Super Bowl year after year. Ramsey has a theory about Super Bowl rings. You know, it's something to be proud of, but uh, I just feel that you can't live in the past. You know, if I wear that, it's reminding me of what I did back then, you know, rather than look ahead of what I'm going to do in the future. Another omen, Bill. Now, when Ramsey won his Super Bowl ring, 1981, uh, Oakland was a wild card team, the only wild card team to win the Super Bowl. The Patriots are a wild card team. And when Ramsey won that ring, it was right here in New Orleans in the Superdome. So, it might be a good sign. Kid, I'll have to say that. Let's take a call. Go ahead, caller. You're on Sports Overtime. Yeah, I'd like to congratulate the Patriots, first of all. And it's glad to see them in the headlines instead of the Boston Celtics being raised in Massachusetts. I'm well, you know, I'm used to seeing the Celtics up there, and I heard Kevin McHale saying it's hard to believe that they're in the, the back row of everything. <laughs> and I'd also like to say it's good to see a USFL player on, on TV. I was stationed in Jacksonville for about three or four years, and it, it's good to see them get some notice because there are a lot of good players down there. As Craig James, I believe, came from Jacksonville, if I'm right. That's great. All right, thanks. Thank you. Go ahead. You're on Sports Overtime. Uh, yeah, I'd like to find out who's starting the ball. I mean, we hear... Uh, Eason has a stomach virus, and we don't know what's going on. If it's, it's the Groban let's, or Eason. Let's go down to New Orleans. Bruce Glazier standing by. That was something I was supposed to check in with you earlier. What is the uh, health status of Tony Eason, Bruce? Anything new today? Nothing new today. He is going to start. They say he has improved greatly. It was just a 24-hour stomach virus, but Eason will be starting quarterback today for the Pats. Okay, thanks a lot. It looks like Eason's going to go. To um, Ed, any thoughts about that? If, once Simple again, question, and then just leave it at that. Sorry. Once again, that's all right. It's the same situation that uh, it's a big game. And uh, actually, I used to play my best games when I was sick, whatever good that was. So Why? Just coincidence? Psychological, you know, you've got to overcompensate for the sickness. Okay, let's take another call. Go ahead. You're on Sports Overtime. Yes, thank you very much. Listen, I'm calling from Portland, Maine. All right, I've been there before. <laughs> yes, I bet you have. Listen, I was just wondering if you think the degree of seriousness shown by the Bears this week by their partying activity in New Orleans compares to the Patriots. Well, I think they're just two different kind of ball clubs, and the Bears are coming on like the Bears like to come on. McMahon, you know, the reason he advertised his, the injury to his butt is because, you know, he loves it. It has a degree of humor to it, and, and, he's, and he's that kind of guy. The Patriots are more of a, a solemn, serious team. It hasn't affected me. I don't think it makes a difference. I, I think they're both ready. They're, yeah, they're both ready. They're both also blowing off a little bit of pressure. There is an awful lot of pressure they're underneath, so that's their way of, hey, they've got to get away from reality once in a while, and sometimes that's the best way yeah, to do it. I think it. it's just a matter of which you prefer, the Patriots style or the Chicago Bears style. Let's take another call. Go ahead. You're on Sports Overtime. Hello. Yeah. Speak to me. Go ahead, boy. Yes, uh, I prefer the New England Patriots by at least three. Why? And why? Because I think that they can uh, stop Perry from pulling. And I think that's what they have to do to win. All right. Well, the, the key there, I guess, is that you like the Patriots by three. Uh, maybe he means that William Perry would be stunting. And, and Hello, go ahead. You're on Sports Overtime. Um, yes. Do you, who do you think um, 
Do you think McMahon will play in the Super Bowl? Well, let's go down to Bruce Glazier. I don't think there's any question. Bruce, any question that McMahon will play with that, I, I don't know what to call it other than a butt injury. Pulled oh, muscle, I guess. Th that's basically what it is. It's a deep bruise, and there, there is no question that uh, he'll play today. There was no question all week long. It was, they were just talking about how serious the bruise was. The big brouhaha was over the fact that McMahon was having acupuncture, and the Bears said, no, you're not. But he had it anyway, and then they decided, all right, we'll authorize it. So if there, people are saying that McMahon may have been manipulating them. That's the way he operates. That's the way the Bears operate. But that was the big story. He has improved greatly. He said that the adrenaline, he'll have a shot of Novocaine, and the acupuncture, and he'll be ready to be a starting quarterback. Ed, uh, what do you think of that Novocaine? You ever heard of that? Or? She's never. Never. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Another call. You're on Sports Overtime. Bill! Yo! How you doing? I'm doing great! Listen, what are you doing this afternoon anyways? Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, well, we're going to get some Ma and Pa kettle reruns and put them up. You want to come over? Or? Uh, super. All right. What's your question? <laughs> question. Who are you picking now tonight? Oh, uh, see, I picked the Jets because I thought when the Patriots got into the playoffs, they'd, they'd back up, and they didn't. I thought they beat the Raiders, but I figured they had beaten the Jets to make me look bad, so I had to pick the Raiders. And then the Dolphins, I was down there, and I really had the feeling that they beat the Dolphins, but... You know, once you've gone to the well twice, go to the well three times. So I'm looking for a real good game, and I think the Patriots can beat them, but I've got to pick the Bears just so I can pick against the Patriots all the way, and they can win the Super Bowl. Exactly. So you're going to give us luck the whole way along. I think that's the key. You know, when I was a little kid, I used to believe that the Boston Red Sox won or lost, depending upon whether I was listening to the radio. And if they got behind, I had to turn the radio off and walk away and come back. And I was a big momentum kid even then. A little weird, but big momentum. Go ahead. You're on Sports Overtime. Hello? Yes. Um, I was wondering, I was wondering if, um, what you, um, Bill Green said, um, what you said about Billy Sullivan being a bad owner. Well, that hasn't been my kick. For the viewers watching in Bangor, uh, this is a regular program that doesn't air up there, and you're joining us after Dale's Sports Alive, Dale Duff Sports Alive program, which for the people in the Southern Maine aired in Bangor at 2 o'clock, and they're just kind of joining us before going to the network. And we've talked periodically this year about Billy Sullivan and the Patriots ownership, and I think it's more Bruce than me in this particular point, plus he's not here to defend himself, uh, doesn't like the Patriot ownership. And I think a lot of people agree with him. I think the feeling has been that the Sullivan family has not been the most effective and dynamic ownership in professional football. Ed, you're involved with professional football. Uh, without stating a personal opinion, unless you care to, uh, what, how are the Sullivans regarded as owners? Do good owners produce winning football teams? Usually. Um, I think what has happened is the Sullivan family has put their noses, which is their right, into the management and into the players, actually, and with the coaching staff, and they kind of dictate what is done and what isn't done. This is really the first time in maybe, what, six, seven years that they've actually had a winning team and that everything meshes together so that the players, the coaches, and the management and the Sullivans all get along. So that's, you know, they can't be real bad owners if they've owned the team for over 20 years. But it's just, I think it's a time for change, and uh, it's a nice time to make a change. I do want to challenge you. They've had winning teams, but not playoff teams. Exactly. Right, right. okay. Let's take a break, and we'll be back to take more calls on sports overtime. The numbers, 1-800-482-9633 uh, and 772-0183. Uh, they're all full right now, but we'll be taking some more calls and opening up some lines for you, because you are the stars of sports overtime. Raymond Berry and Chicago, you will learn. We beat the Jets, LA, Miami. Now it is your turn. Oh, the way the networks have been. The beauty about a great product like the Honda Four Tracks is it can be used for work as well as play. And of course, that means that service after the sale is more important than ever. The customer needs his bike to be in top shape all the time. And he's counting on the mechanics at Tri Sports Honda to do the job fast and to do it right. We never forget that. In fact, we want everyone to know that the people at Tri Sports Honda care about what happens after you buy the bike. At Hancock Lumber, our people make it their business to know more about building supplies than anyone else. That way you know you're getting the proper tools, the best lumber, the right look, and the finishing touches to make your project complete. No matter how big or small the job, if it's important to you, it's important to us. So whether you're planning for a weekend or planning for a lifetime, you can count on Hancock Lumber because our people, people make the difference. difference. My checking account? The minimum balance was tying up my cash. Then I got smart. Mine? 
Service charges were adding 40, 50, even $60 a year. Then I got smart. More people every day are getting smart. Smart checking from Casco Northern Bank. No minimum balance, no monthly service charges, no per check charges. One simple $30 annual fee covers it all. Get smart, a new kind of checking account, only from the bank that's always thinking of ways to help you. Casco Northern Bank. Hey, Vern, is that your body? You know what you need, Vern? It's some of this Oakhurst low-fat milk and Oakhurst low-fat cottage cheese. High in protein, low in calories, 98% fat-free. It will make you a lean machine. Know what I mean? So next time, talk to your buddy Ernest first. And lighten up, Vern, with Oakhurst low-fat milk and cottage cheese. It's the road to a body beautiful. Know what I mean? There you are, Vern. You look better already. Know what I mean? WCSH TV, Channel 6, Portland. All right, we're back live with Sports Overtime, taking your phone calls. Let's go first, though, to New Orleans. John Doherty standing by. John, you've worked hard all week. What you got to show for it, guy? Well, I'll tell you, Bill, we are here at the Intercontinental Hotel, which is really the base camp for the uh, New England Patriots and certainly for New England Patriot fans. I want to tell you, though, this city of uh, New Orleans has made a big impression on all of us. It has been uh, a city that's very clean. The people have been so friendly. It's one I'd like to come back and visit sometime. But most impressive in New Orleans is the site of Super Bowl XX, the Superdome. Let's take a look at it. Imagine downtown Portland or Bangor under one big roof. You have an idea of the size of the Superdome in New Orleans. You have an idea, but until you get inside, do you really know? Nearly 80,000 people can sit comfortably in the dome and watch a sporting event. The Bears and Patriots gathered in the dome this week to talk about the game with 3,000 reporters, and the dome still looked empty. The dome itself rises 27 stories high and covers about 12 acres of land. It is so big that it has its own television station to provide instant replays and close-ups on six big screens. Because it's enclosed, fans are warmed in the winter and cooled in the summer. The Superdome dominates the skyline of New Orleans. On Sunday, both the Patriots and the Bears will determine which dominates pro football. James is on the run. This is going to be a touchdown for the Patriots. 90 yards and the Patriots are in the end zone. James beat the linebacker. Now we hope there's more play-by-play -play description just like that, just like that in uh, this afternoon's game. Just a, a minute now, I want to I want to thank the the Florias of of Ossipi, New Hampshire, who arrived just a few minutes ago with a specially designed birthday cake for me. So happy birthday uh, to me from the Florias, and and hello from the Florias to everyone in Ossipi. You know there have been a number of people making predictions on the Super Bowl this week, but. None with more authority than a gentleman we met uh, earlier this week down on Bourbon Street. His name is Walter, and he's a wizard. Okay, I'm Walter, the wizard of the well. The wizard of the well. It's a wishing well. The well came just slightly before the wizard did. Okay. Walter, <clears throat> as a wizard, um, I, I can't think of any better authority before the Super Bowl to ask who's going to win the Super All Bowl right. itself. All right. Uh, the, uh, apparently Chicago will, and apparently they'll... Uh, uh, beat the spread. However, if New England comes in with a lot of spirit, they can overturn it. So that's that's the, the fact. During the Sugar Bowl, uh, you know, Miami was favored over Tennessee. About 98% of the people that made wishes for the game were from Tennessee. So, see what happened. Now, Walter has, Walter admitted to me that he has been wrong before, <laughs> and we think he's going to be wrong today, because we are picking the Pats. Bill? Thank you, John. More wishes will come out of New England, I'm sure. Let's go to another phone call. You're on Sports Overtime. Hi. How are you? Pretty good. Um, I'd like to ask you, and, uh, do you think the Bears' defense has, uh, is really strong this year? Oh, I think it's one of the best who have ever played football. Ed Macklin, you're the football expert. What do you think? Same thing. You can't, you can't deny that. They're an excellent uh, defense, and so is the pass. Excellent defense. Yeah. What, what's the strength of the, of the Bear defense? Single, Terry, that build around them. The monster defense, they got Singletary and Dent. It's just the idea that uh, he has free reign and do it and has it whatever he pleases. It was on, you know, Sports Illustrated. That's, he has definite coverages, and he plays it extremely well. Okay, let's take another call. Go ahead, call. You're on Sports Overtime. Yeah, I was wondering if you could tell me if Ken Sims is going to be playing at all today. Uh, let's check in with Bruce. You hot down there, Bruce, right now? We're looking for a, a health report on Ken Sims. He won't be playing at all today, I don't believe. He, he was not be. activated, so... Uh, not, not to my knowledge, and uh, we've been around, but you, I don't think you'll see him at all today. He, 
He's not going to help you anyway. He's been out seven weeks, and Ferris is doing a great job. You got to go with him. Um, all right, let's take another call. Go ahead. You're on Sports Overtime. Yes, hello. Well, uh, I would like to ask uh, Ed McElhaney a question. He's right here. Go ahead, please. Uh, Ed, uh, I'm wondering why that, uh, there isn't enough uh, attention being given to the Patriots' ability, to their defensive ability, to stop the Bears' offense. Uh, and why uh, has this been uh, uh, downplayed somewhat, in your opinion? And do you think that the Patriots' defense can, in fact, stop uh, the Bears' offense? Thanks. Bad reporting, I'd say, Eddie. Yeah, I, I definitely. I just I think that the uh, Pats <laughs> can stop them. It's got to be reporters, without a doubt. But no, I think they can stop them, and I just think that uh, you know the the defense of the year is the Bears. For the last two years, it's been the Bears, so they're going to highlight that. And the Pats are just the uh, wild card miracle team that's made it up. So they're going to parlay that, and they're not going to just say that the Pats are more or less a bunch of te a, a team team, you know, with yep. no real individuals. And whereas the uh, uh, the Bears are a lot of individuals. Bruce Glazier. Got a question. Why has the media response been so, uh, why has the response in general been so terrific to the Bears? We're the underdogs. We want some of that attention. Well, that, but most of the people want to hear about the Bears and hear about Singletary and hear Otis Wilson mouth off and, and Richard Denton, all these guys. As, as Eddie said, that they're, they're the individuals and the 46 defense and Buddy Ryan, that's what all the talk is about. Unfortunately, the Pats defense hasn't got the publicity, but that's good. Let's not give them the publicity. Let's let them show it today in the Superdome. You have to remember, too, Bill, that the Bears are more than willing to talk about what they have going. The Pats, on the other hand, are a little bit more quiet about things. All right, thanks a lot, you guys. Get over the ball game so that you don't miss a bit of the action. We're going to wrap it up for right now. Thanks a lot, Ed McElhinney, for joining us this week. Appreciate all your help. Thank you, especially for being with us. You can't see my legs. Those are Argyle socks, by the way. We'll be back with Video Sports tonight at 1120 when we hope that Patriots are Super Bowl champions. See you tonight on News Center at 1120 with Video Sports. Good night. After. <laughs>